amen, to present what I feel like the Lord has given. I'm going to have to turn, I'm going to have us turn to the book of Jeremiah chapter number 51. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 51. I know the Lord, amen, has spoken to my heart. Pray that the Lord will help me to present, amen, what he has given, amen, to us tonight. I know there's not as many. My mom and my sister are both very sick. And uh, and so a lot of this cold stuff going around. But uh, I'm glad you're in the house of the Lord tonight. And, uh, and uh, I know he's here. Uh, but uh, I know he's here. I, uh, Jeremiah chapter 51 and uh, verse number 2. And uh, will send unto Babylon fanners. Uh, verse number 12. I apologize. That didn't sound right looking at it. Amen. Uh, there we are. Verse number 12. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchman. Prepare the ambushes, for the Lord hath both devised and done that which he hath spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. The Lord of, of hosts hath sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee. He hath made the earth by his power, and he hath established the world by his wisdom. Amen. And hath stretched out the heaven by his understanding. In verse number 12, he said, Set up the standard uh, upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up uh, watchmen. Prepare the ambushes. For the Lord hath both devised and done that which he hath spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. Amen. Set up up the standard. So uh, tonight, by the help of the Lord, I'm going to talk about the standard against Babylon. The standard against Babylon. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word that's forever settled in heaven. I pray, O oh God, that as your word is anointed, that same anointing would fall heavy upon us here tonight, that you would touch each heart and each life, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask these things, and we will be careful to give you all praise and glory. Amen. And you may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the Word of God. It's interesting, this, this city or this place called Babylon. It, uh, it is something that uh, first really takes its, uh, takes its entrance in in the Bible as the word Babylon uh, in the uh, in the major prophets and uh, and then it journeys all the way till you step into the New Testament into the book of Revelation and uh, and it's mentioned again as the country or the or the city the the leadership of Babylon uh, it uh, it's it was a the the Babylonian Empire per se as as uh, we would know it under the realm of uh, Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar was only about 70 years long uh, or less than that actually just a just a short time uh, but they had a tremendous impact in Scripture and uh, and we understand why, uh, as we as we do a little bit of research, we understand why they were able to conquer Israel is because God had allowed them that privilege to do that, and, uh, and they, Israel had been disobedient, Amen, to the plan of God, and so God allowed them to uh, allowed Israel to be conquered. But if I step back a little bit farther in time, there's a name that we would be more familiar with uh, even than Babylon. It's all the way back to the book of Genesis, chapter number 9, and it's called a Tower of Babel. 
Amen. And that same Tower of Babel, amen, is that same spirit and that same uh, realm that carries all the way through uh, to uh, the book of Revelation. I think it's more whenever we're speaking in terms of just a country being defeated. Uh, God didn't take anything and, and write things, have things written down just by happenstance. I believe everything that God had in this book is for a purpose. There's nothing by accident. And so whenever he's mentioning Babylon, there has to be a reason why Babylon is mentioned so many times amen and uh, there are spirits uh, as a matter of fact when you step into the book of revelations in chapter number 18 it talks about the spirits of devils it spirits it talks about every unclean spirit living in that place it's an abode that you uh, that you wouldn't want to be a part of Amen. If anybody that would want to live in among that type of a spirit, there's definitely something wrong with their spirit. Amen. Because it is filled with, amen, the spirits of devils. Amen. And, uh, but this place called Babylon, amen, perhaps if we take it back to its root and understand that it's, it's beginning started with a disobedience to the plan and the will of God. Amen. You remember what God had said. He said, I want you to go forth in chapter number 9 of Genesis and replenish the earth. In other words, spread out. Don't just stay in one location. Move out. Fill the earth. And man said, we found a plain. We found a place. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a tower that ascends into the heavens. And we're not moving anywhere. We will stay together as a group of people. It was a realm of disobedience that, uh, that started Babylon on its way. It was in direct opposition to the plan and the will of God. Amen. And, uh, and then when we step into the realm of the Babylon that Daniel and Isaiah and Jeremiah knew, amen, it was one that by their time, amen, Babylon had come to the place where they had not only been a robber of the things of God, amen, and taking gold from the temple, but they, if they went to the extreme of burning the walls, amen, and even taking out the foundation of the temple. They totally destroyed anything that would be of worship to God. And they brought those articles, amen, over to Babylon, and in Babylon, it was Belshazzar that took the, uh, took the vessels of gold that were intended for worshiping God, and he held his little party, amen, where the finger of God would write, you've been weighed in the balances, and you've, amen, been found wanting. And so we understand that Babylon was... Uh, an enemy of uh, of uh, the things of God. They've all, it's always been something that has been in direct opposition to a child of God. It's been in direct opposition to a man, what we call the church of the living God today. A man throughout the centuries, the spirit of Babylon has always been something that the church has has had to fight against. 
amen, to understand how powerful, amen, Jesus spoke of it when he spoke in Matthew chapter 16, and he said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. I think that he was speaking of the spirits of darkness that would try to attack the church, amen, and one of those spirits is the spirit of Babylon. Amen. And, uh, and, and so uh, when we step over into, uh, into the book of Revelation, amen, Babylon says, spoke of uh, three different things. Number one, in Revelation chapter number 18, if we could turn there just for a moment, uh, we can find these three things. Uh, and I know uh, I'm taking a little bit of a sidetrack, but I'm, but I'm right on track, okay? And uh, if you can stay with me, I know what the Lord gave me. Amen. Revelations chapter 18 and verse number, uh, verse number 2 said, He cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful uh, bird. In verse number 9, amen, the Bible speaks, and it says, And the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, shall bewail and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. I believe that, amen, that uh, Babylon... Uh, was speaking of a government, uh, a, a government entity that uh, would be what we would classify today as a one-world government. Amen. There are little presidents here, prime ministers over here, but it has a head somewhere, and that it is quickly coming to a place, amen, where that will be again fulfilled. Daniel spoke of the vision or the dream that Nebuchadnezzar, stay in Revelations, amen, that Nebuchadnezzar had and his image, and his image said, there is a head of gold, and thou art that head, O Nebuchadnezzar. He's speaking again of this political power, amen, that is moving, and so Babylon's uh, Babylon's part of its source of strength or part of its uh, part of what it gives is it gives a power to governments. Amen. The second thing that it gives a power to, amen, in, uh, in verse number 11, the Bible said, And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. Amen. They're weeping because Babylon has been destroyed and the merchants are saying, we don't have any way of making money anymore. I believe that the second thing that Babylon, amen, deals with is the financial system of the world empire. The third thing that we read, amen, in verses 23 and verse 24, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. The voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries all nations were all nations deceived, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and all that were slain upon the earth. Amen. So he's dealing with sorceries. In other words, it's false doctrine. It's those that would stand in opposition or false religion. It's standing in opposition to the things, amen, that would be of the things of God. They're in such direct opposition that they have slain the prophets and saints that would, would stand up for truth. Amen. And, uh, and all we got to do is go back a couple of generations. Actually, we can face in this generation, we can see that there have been those who have faced tremendous persecution because they have stood 
for the name of Jesus Christ and for an apostolic doctrine. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And, uh, and so we see this spirit of Babylon that is, amen, in attack mode, amen, against, against the things that, uh, uh, that we would believe in. The second thing that I'd like to bring out, because my whole message is not about Babylon, but there is a standard that is against Babylon. Amen. There is a standard. Now, amen, the word standard in Scripture, uh, when we first begin to find that word, it's found uh, in, the, in the Pentateuch or the first five, uh, first five books a couple of different times. And it deals with, amen, each tribe, amen, had a standard that they stood with. If I was of the tribe of Benjamin, amen, when that standard was lifted up, amen, I would be able to recognize the emblem and, and I could join with my, uh, with my tribe simply because I'm of the tribe of Benjamin. I think that perhaps in today's society we could perhaps equated something similar to our, our state flags. Amen. When I see the Michigan state flag, amen, I can say that's the state that I was born in and now I live in. Amen. And, uh, and whenever I see that flag, I, as long as I live in Michigan, I've got to say, I'll try to be loyal to it as long as it's loyal to God. Amen. And uh, if you want to break it into a nation, we, we live with two borders of nations on either side of us. Amen. The Canadian border and the Mexican border. And on both sides of them, there are flags. But whenever I see the United States flag, I've got to say... That is the standard, and if I want to, and as long as I'm a citizen of the United States of America, when that flag is presented and they sing the national anthem, my hand, my hand, my, I'm going to be standing with my hand over my heart because I am pledging allegiance to the place that I call home. It's the place of my loyalties at, the, at this particular time. Amen. If I can take that into the realm of the Spirit, amen, the way that I identify my life with, Amen. Is because of a standard, amen, that was placed in my life some 2,000 years ago. Oh, hallelujah. When he was lifted up on the cross, amen, everything else, amen, is insignificant in comparison with what he did for me at Calvary. Amen. I am loyal to the United States as long as they will allow me the freedom of religion and as long as they will allow me to worship. Amen. But my loyalty, amen, will, will be superseded by a loyalty that said my first allegiance is to Jesus Christ. I will always serve him. Amen. It matters not what you command against me. It matters not what you would try to make a law and make me do or not do. Amen. My number one allegiance is a standard that was lifted up 2,000 years ago at Calvary. And when I lift my eyes and see the cross of Calvary, there's something inside of me that says, 
I want to be like him. I want to serve him. I want to love him. And I will never forsake him. Oh, hallelujah. There's something about that blood. There's something about that name. Oh, hallelujah. It gives me power. It gives me the strength. Amen. And because of his resurrection, amen, I can have a celebration time rejoicing in the power of Almighty God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. It is lifting up that standard. And so whenever we, whenever we speak, amen, uh, of, this, uh, of this time, it's interesting to me uh, that through, uh, and I, I, I was just, uh, I just finished the book of Jeremiah, and every time that I get into that book, amen, uh, there are, uh, there is, uh, it starts out, amen, with, uh, with Israel in a full decline. They're a backslidden nation, and God has allowed Babylon to overcome them. And they are in the midst of being overcome in the book of Jeremiah. All the way through, all the way to you get about to about 40, some chapter in the 40s, somewhere in that chapter, all of a sudden something happens. And God, amen, turns the page and he says, I know, amen, that I've brought judgment, but I'm getting ready to turn it back again. And I'm going to bring judgment against those, amen, that have, that have been in opposition to you. You've been battling, amen, some of you have been battling. He, he, you can read uh, in so many words, uh, while you've been in Israel, you've served God here, and yet Babylon seems to have had the upper hand. Some of you have been brought into captivity in Babylon, amen, and you, and you have lived your life in Babylon, amen, and now you're wondering if there'll ever be a day when you'll ever be able to hear the words, Jerusalem, amen, is, is a conquering place again. You're wondering if the temple will ever be restored, if there'll ever be revival again, if there'll ever be a restoration again. Amen. But Jeremiah said, it's time for you to understand, amen, that we're going to lift a standard up. And when we lift the standard up, amen, against Babylon, it's in the hand of God, amen, that this standard is being lifted up. It's not us fighting the battle, but it's a God that is more powerful, hallelujah, than any kingdom that has ever come along. And when he lifts the standard, it doesn't matter, amen, what Babylon has to say. Babylon will be defeated by those that have chosen to stand in line, amen, with the standard that God has raised up. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I, I, we can talk about the standard, amen, the, the standard of Jesus' name, the standard, amen, of the importance of repentance, amen, and water baptism in the precious name of Jesus Christ and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, amen. Some would say it don't take all that, but I'll lift the standard, amen, just a little bit higher and say that's what what I pledge my life to. I've given, I stake my eternity upon the salvation, amen, that I found in the Word of God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Something within me has got to be willing to say, amen, Babylon standard, amen, will come down as the kingdom of God, amen, arises. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, I, I'm, I'm at looking the, at, at the world system that we have today. Amen. It is, uh, 
uh, it is in direct opposition to the things of God. Amen. Anything and everything is trying to get our attention away from worshiping God. Amen. If we, if we wanted to uh, deal just a little while, we could look at what the government would like for us to do. They want us to depend upon government and not depend upon God. Amen. They want us to say, Uncle Sam can take care of me instead of trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. It would be, amen, within this Babylon structure that we would find, amen, many times some of the education that the world has, amen, would step beyond what the Bible would say. And there, those in the educational realm would try to bombard the mind of our children and adults alike into thinking, amen, the Bible is just one form of literature instead of saying it is the infallible Word of God. I'd stand today and say if it violates the Word of God, amen, it's not a part of my standard. My standard, amen, rests upon thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Oh, hallelujah, amen. The word of God is right and every man is a liar. I've got to say that the Word of God is my standard. Oh, hallelujah. I've got to say that there is there's nothing that can question, amen, God's Word, amen, and come forth, amen, without, without it being defeated, amen, because no matter what attack that the, that the enemy would try to throw against the church, the Word of God will stand forever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word will never pass away. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. By the way, whenever you speak about the Word, you've got to speak about this, but then you also got to look at John where he says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Amen. And the Word was God. Hallelujah. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And so when we look at Jesus Christ, we got to say, Here comes the Word again. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. It's a standard. Amen. It's a standard. It's a standard, amen, that, the, that, uh, that we see. You know, there's a, it was all the way back there in Genesis whenever God said, I, I want you to do this. And man said, I know what God said, but I don't think I want to do that. And uh, we live in a society that says, oh, I know that's in the word of God, but I don't think I want to do that. I think I'd rather just live my own life and you know I know what it says but I have my own belief system <laughs> you know what I'm saying it's, a, it's something that that uh, it's a challenge it's challenging the word of God it's questioning what God what God would say Babylon uh, the spirit of Babylon says we're going to do our own thing it doesn't matter what what God's word says we're just going to do our own thing, and we're going to have our own doctrine. We're going to do, we're going to do what we want to do, amen, and, and God isn't going to make any change in me. I'll make changes in God. I'll make changes in what I believe, amen. But the standard is to be able to say, but his word says. But, his, but the word of God is, the, is my guide. And if it's in the book, I'm not going to violate what the book says. I'm going to stay, amen, on, on track, amen, because I know that his word will always, will always stand the test of time. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And, 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 then, and, uh, and then I thought, beyond the government, there's the monetary system. Amen. There's that. There's that system that says uh, that that says it's the almighty dollar, and we live in a society that is overwhelmed. Amen. With how rich we ha have to be, 
how we have to keep up with the Joneses, how we have to do this and this and this. And, uh, and uh, Babylon is, is laughing because of the gold they're making. Hallelujah. Whenever the Lord just simply says, Amen, consider the lily of the field. It doesn't toil, and yet it's, it's more glorious than Solomon. Take a look at the sparrow. Don't worry about it. Hallelujah. Whatever you've got, God will take care of you. Hallelujah. And then the old psalmist said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed out begging bread. Now, there might have been a time or two whenever the bread got a little short. But then he's always taking care of me right at the last minute. He's always put enough meal in the barrel and enough oil in the barrel to give me one more meal. He's always been my provider. And I have found, amen, him to be the one that I can stand on. So instead of trusting in Babylon, I'm going to trust in the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And then the false religions. Hallelujah. I, I have decided that I'm going to allow the things of truth to be the thing that I stand for. Babylon the Great. Amen. Uh, in the natural, uh, first fell about the time, about halfway through uh, uh, Daniel's life. Amen. As far as that, that country and the Medes and Persians overtook it. But when we step over into Revelation, that spirit was still alive. Amen. That spirit was still, was still around. And so, amen. There's something that, uh, that uh, the Lord knew when he said, The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He was letting us know that there's always going to be a battle. There's always going to be something that's going to be fighting. Amen. But up on this rock, I will build my church. Pick up the standard of Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In my name they shall cast out devils. In my name they shall speak with tongues. Oh, hallelujah. They're going to be able to lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. It's a standard that we have. It's not something that I do on my own. I'm looking at the standard, and because of his blood, and because of his name, I have a tremendous, amen, victory. Sometimes we sing that song, amen, Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Amen. Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Amen. I'd have to, I, I want him to understand Babylon. Amen. You might think you have an upper hand, but greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Oh, hallelujah. I thank God he didn't leave us without a standard. I thank God that I, that I can say, yes, I'm a child of the King. Yes, I belong to Jesus. Yes, I decided to serve the Lord with all of my heart. Oh, hallelujah. And when the world, amen, would try to throw at me, oh, you're just trying to be, amen, uh, self-righteous. No, I'm trying to be like Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I'm not trying, amen, I'm not trying just to make you look bad. I'm trying to look, make him look better. I'm trying to see how great God can be in my life. And whatever I have to do, I'm going to let my mind, I'm going to let my heart, I'm going to let my spirit, I'm going to let my whole life be focused in upon worship him oh hallelujah I thank God amen hallelujah for the truth in his word amen well I, I know this is a simple message amen but I, I I thought you know the Lord has given us a standard hallelujah and uh, I did hear about that young preacher that uh, whenever he had a certain time frame that he had to fill Amen. And uh, he looked at his notes and he said, Well, I've already preached everything that I have on my notes.
and I know they expected me to tw preach twice as long. I don't know what to do. He thought real quick, and he said, well, I done told you once, and now I'm going to tell you again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't have to do that tonight. Amen. Yes, Dad. society that's going to have a they, they will be fighting, they will be in opposition to the church. Amen. To anyone that tries to be a believer they're going to try their best to fight against us. Hallelujah. But well, we got to remember that the standard that we have Hallelujah. And then whenever I got to reading and I, and I forgot to go there tonight, but Isaiah 59 Amen. When the enemy comes in like a flood the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I'm not of the tribe of Benjamin, but I'm of the tribe of Jesus Christ. I belong in his kingdom. Oh, praise God. Amen. Let's love the Lord for just a few moments tonight as we're dismissed from this place. I love you, Lord. I thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts. I pray, O oh God, that we would always be able to stand with the standard, hallelujah, of truth. Let us love this truth. Let us hold fast to what you have given us, hallelujah. And let us watch Babylon be defeated. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask these things. We give honor and glory to you. And we thank you for what you are doing and for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name. I pray these things. Hallelujah. Amen. I wonder if there's anyone that would like prayer tonight as we're, as we're closing off this service. If there's anyone that needs prayer or a special need, amen. We open it up for that right now.